Good morning. In class today, I'm sorry I couldn't be here. Uh, we're going to continue on with Chapter 16, Section 2. Uh, as we go through and we uh, look at notes today, uh, there'll be an assignment at the end. Uh, and I will uh, make sure that we're kind of all caught up on Tuesday. One of the things on Tuesday we need to do is to look at everybody's grade. They're updated in the computer. Uh, but if you turn something in late and I didn't see it, uh, Tuesday is your day. I'll call you up th to my desk and we'll look at uh, two grades. One grade is going to be your, uh, your Google Classroom grade. Also, the second grade will be your CISC grade. So I'm importing all the grades from Google Classroom to CISC. Um, and if there's a discrepancy there, we need to iron that out on Monday. So, um, and then section two. The first battle of Bull Run was the first major battle of the Civil War. It was fought in Northern Virginia, um, and both sides were very optimistic that uh, it would be a victory for them. Um, the Union was especially, so they dressed up uh, Union people, um, uh, spectators, I guess I should say, uh, dressed up in their Sunday best and, you know, put blankets down, getting ready to have a picnic, and because, you know, there was no uh, Netflix to binge watch, uh, they decided that they would watch the North and the South fight in the Civil War. Um, however, uh, the inexperience from the Union Army, like we said uh, earlier on, if I'm picking a team, I would like to pick the guys that uh, might be the best to help me win. Uh, well, a lot of Southern guys prided themselves on their militarism, and uh, the Confederacy, uh, which only had, um, were outnumbered two to three, I guess I could say, they were inspired by General Stonewall Jackson. Uh, and the Union was forced to retreat as they came running, and uh, they came running over the top of uh, some of the, big, the picnickers. So, what the North thought would be an easy, decisive victory, because we, we did a checklist early on. They had the people, they had the manpower, they had the resources, uh, but I'd rather have the right 20,000 people uh, and be able to tell when they need to go where, uh, and that ultimately was going to be the decisive battle of Bull Run. Now, we will come back to Bull Run uh, a little bit later, uh, but this was a shock for the North. Uh, once the outcome of the battle uh, was understood by most, we knew that this war all of a sudden uh, was not going to be a short war where the North was just going to um, capture the South right back. So, at the bottom you see General Stonewall Jackson, um, who had been seen holding out like a, heroically, like a stone wall. Um, so General Stonewall Jackson led the Confederates uh, to win this attack against the Union, uh, further dashing the hopes that the Union would uh, have a quick war. Uh, as we talked about this, kind of the, uh, the shock of the first battle of Bull Run um, led Lincoln, Lincoln to react with a call for more volunteers. Uh, several people, you know, if it's me, Mr. Hopkins has uh, a plan, it's uh, a five-year plan, uh, it's just called Don't Die. So being the hero that I am, you know, some people who were not, um, you know, settled on whether they thought slavery was a right or slavery was not right, they didn't really buy in. So, um, as they're looking at this, the Northerners woke up to the reality of this war. It would be a long, drawn-out conflict. Uh, Lincoln appointed George McClellan to lead the army um, that's of the East, or the Army of the Potomac, as we could say. Uh, and more training was needed for these Northern troops, especially because they were not battle-ready. 150,000 more troops uh, were going to be called for this. Uh, Ward C. Uh, remember the uh, plan that Lincoln uh, in the North was trying to use was called the Anaconda Plan, uh, ordering a blockade of these southern ports to try to prevent the South from exporting its uh, cash crops, cotton and tobacco, uh, as well as importing supplies, weapons of war. So Southerners uh, planned to challenge the blockade, uh, and 
uh, two major uh, boats kind of emerged from this. One, the Merrimack. Uh, the other was the Monitor. So uh, these were original iron-clad ships. Um, so we're looking at that. Most of the um, hulls of ships or the outside was made out of wood at this point. Uh, well, what made these different is that they were impenetrable for the most part from cannonball fire, uh, which could very easily break down a ship. So as we're looking at this new age thing in the, the Civil War, seven, uh, 1860s, uh, we see these two ships um, coming into fruition in battle, uh, which was the new technology of the age. On March 9th, the two ironclads exchanged fire. Uh, neither ship, though, could sink each other. The Union succeeded in keeping the Merrimack in harbor, so it never threatened any northern ships. Uh, but again, it could be it could fire upon our ships at very close range. So here is uh, some pictures here that kind of uh, talk about the Merrimack and the Monitor, uh, and these were the things that. Uh, we're going to be weapons of war. It kind of looks almost uh, like a almost modern warship. The war in the West. Now, when we say West, we don't mean way far out West. The North's primary goal in the West is to gain control of the Mississippi and Tennessee River. So when we're looking at West, we're not actually talking much further West than Illinois. Uh, Union General centered at Cairo, Illinois. Now, make sure we don't pronounce that Cairo. Cairo's in Europe. Uh, under a general named Ulysses S. Grant. Um, Grant was able to capture Fort Henry on the Tennessee River and Fort Donelson on the Cumberland River. Uh, Grant demanded an unconditional surrender and became a North hero. Uh, so later on, his name's going to be uh, used a lot in politics as he was a, a very good general and a hero for the North. Um, he would eventually run for president. Let's not ruin the surprise on what happens later. So there is General Ulysses S. Grant there. Uh, my college history teacher seemed to felt like he was uh, Grant's best friend, wrote a couple of books about him, uh, had all kinds of interesting uh, side notes on General Ulysses S. Grant, but we're just going to report on the history at this point since it's um, a condensed class. The Battle of Shiloh. Uh, fighting lasted for two days with some of the most bitter, blooding fight, bloody fighting of the war. Uh, in April of 1862, fought near Corinth, Mississippi, an important railroad junction. Again, part of the North's plan was to take over control of the exports, the rivers, and also railroads. Why might they do this? That's right, to make sure that they couldn't ship supplies. Anything else? Oh yeah, another good point, to make sure that they couldn't uh, ship people quickly either. Confederate forces launched a surprise attack on the morning of April 6, 1862, the bloodiest battle of the war so far. Uh, the Union was unable to defeat the Confederates on the second day and win control of the corner until May 30th. More than 20,000 casualties, which are people that are killed or wounded, uh, was reported at the Battle of Shiloh. Uh, New Orleans, again, a port city. Uh, a few weeks after Shiloh, the North won another important victory. April 25th, 1862, Union naval forces under David Farragut captured New Orleans in Louisiana, the South's largest city. This meant the Confederacy could no longer use the Mississippi River to carry its goods to sea. At this point, the Union controlled almost the entire bit of the Mississippi. So this is the long, you know, remember the North knows it's going to be a long way, and we're about halfway through the war at this point. It is a long road ahead of them, but slowly they were going to take over a little bit at a time. In the East, uh, General McClellan led the Army. Uh, on his Peninsular Campaign, in a word that you don't see very often is mentioned in your books, uh, took several weeks uh, to make an attack on Richmond, Virginia. Uh, Lincoln was frustrated by McClellan. 
he was not a very aggressive general. Some would say that he was succinct in his tact, uh, didn't want to put his troops' lives at risk. However, on the opposing end, General Robert E. Lee was commanding the rebels, or the Confederacy. In seven days' worth of battle, a series of encounters between Yankees and rebels, the Union troops failed to capture the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia. Uh, Lincoln orders McClellan and his troops to pull back to northern Virginia, uh, and General Stonewall Jackson attempted to uh, attack a supply base at Manassas, Virginia. Uh, the second battle of Bull Run occurred August 29, 1862. Uh, again, another Confederate victory, and Richmond again was no longer threatened. So everything, even though if we uh, threw it out on paper, between Washington, D.C., the United States Capitol, which it still is today, in case you didn't know, uh, and Richmond, Virginia, the Confederate States of America's capital, about 92 miles as the crow flies, and neither side uh, was successful at attacking the others. Uh, following these Southern victories, Confederate, Confederate President Jefferson Davis ordered Lee to launch an offensive or an attack into Maryland and Washington. In pursuit of Lee's troops, two Union soldiers found a copy of Lee's orders for his army. Uh, as the story goes, um, before the next Battle of Antietam, uh, which is where the big fighting would take place, it actually killed a lot of people uh, because these soldiers didn't smoke. So they're riding their horse uh, back to camp and they find on the ground by the river two rolled up cigars. Well, neither of these guys smoked. Uh, but they were going to take him back to camp and try to sell him or trade him for something. So as they didn't smoke, they put him in their back pocket. Uh, they went riding along until they got to camp and they were going to reach in their back pocket to sell him. And then on the inside wasn't tobacco, but happened to have the South's battle plans, where they were going to put their people uh, and how the army was going to be divided. Now these battle plans made it perfect for the North to use uh, and the South was unable to um, react because they knew everything that was going to happen before it happened in the North. September 17, 1862, the bloodiest battle in the entire war. 20,000 soldiers were dead or wounded. The next day, Lee withdrew his troops. Lincoln was still slightly disappointed as McClellan, as we said earlier, he was a little bit uh, hesitant. Uh, he replaced him. He wanted McClellan to keep pushing and take no prisoners and not hold back, and unfortunately McClellan did Antietam. Lincoln was hoping with all this new information we would be able to end the war early. The British were just ready to recognize the Confederacy as an independent nation, but the Union victory at Antietam changed their minds. The, slot, the South lost their best chance at gaining international recognition and support. And President Lincoln used the battle to take action against slavery. Uh, and at this point, he's no longer trying to you know, get back together with the South and North. Now slavery is going to be his issue after all of these people die. So um, that is where the last, um, before we get on to the Emancipation Proclamation, um, that is where the last bit of Section 2 takes you. Uh, what I need you to do now is to open up the uh, Google Form quiz and kind of uh, go through, see how many you know off the top of your head before you go back uh, and look through your notes to answer these questions. Remember, I, I need you to learn a little bit at a time. Let's just not cram right before a test. Uh, I hate to not being with you guys uh, today in class. I'm taking a little guy to a dentist. Um, haven't told him yet, but he's got to have a tooth pulled. Didn't know how to say that to a nine-year-old. However, um, if you need something, please email me, and uh, I'll see you on Tuesday. We'll go over some grades.